The views and opinions expressed by the hosts do not state or reflect those of the company and its management. Furthermore, the assumptions, views, opinions, and insinuations made by the hosts or the guests do not reflect those of the show, the management, and the company. Identify. Discussed. Understand. Casting live from Manila, Philippines, we are Simply Security, helping you streamline security easily. Good evening, Philippines! Good evening, listeners! Of course, it's a Wednesday and welcome back to another episode of Simply Security recorded live today, 25th of November 2020. I am Miles Melia. And I am Eric Alindogan. Welcome to Simply Security. Helping you streamline security easily. Hello, good evening, Miles. Eric. Good evening and good <laughs> evening to our listeners. I am good. I feel good and I'm very excited for uh, our episode tonight. It's very timely, Eric. And uh, it is also an opportunity for all of us to understand. Mm -hmm. It's sort of a refresher course uh, mm -hmm. in understanding uh tropical cyclones or typhoon because even though we are already familiar with some terminologies, um, there are things changing, you know? Right. And at the same time, uh, those information should, uh, for it to be effective, that mm -hmm. should lead to, uh, to, an, to a decision that will save lives, will save property, mm -hmm. and um, most especially a decision that will, um, that will help the community uh, recover as well after a calamity and um, I hope that it will uh, this conversation that we're going to have tonight especially in the private sector mm -hmm. um, will be helpful in coming up with those kinds of decisions so we're, I'm very excited uh, <laughs> to, to um, later we will introduce our guest I encourage all of you to stay tuned and um, right. so tonight we are joined by a very accomplished um, typhoon specialist who have found his passion in talking about weather and natural phenomena to ordinary people through his YouTube channel called Mr. Typhoon. This passion started as early as 12 years old and when in such a young age he has already been tracking and observing typhoons. After graduating geography at the University of the Philippines, he pursued a career in typhoon monitoring. He is a member of the American Meteorological Society since 2008. He is also the former director of Naga College Foundation Typhoon Preparedness Center from 2009 to 2012, formerly associated with the Meteo Group Philippines and Weather Philippines Foundation, an Aboitis Group, non-government organization, and currently he is the founder and owner of uh, more than two decades, to typhoon2000.com, the Philippines' first website on tropical cyclones. Ladies and gentlemen, very honored to introduce to you Mr. David Michael Padua, a.k.a. Mr. Typhoon. Hello, Sir Mike. Hello, Sir Hi, Mike. Uh, good evening. <laughs> Hi, Miles. Hi, Eric. It's a pleasure to be a part of your program. Well, it's our pleasure uh, having yeah. you uh, for tonight's episode, yeah. uh, Sir Mike. Thank you. All right. That's so probably right. Let, 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 let me start the conversation, yes, um, Sir Mike, by, okay. by asking you, what started your interest in typhoons? Because, you know, most kids would be interested in toys, in, in TV, TV shows, Arts. movies. <laughs> arts, sports, yeah. Yeah. but it, it's very unusual for for someone to to you know to have an interest with typhoons. Yeah, I, as far as I could remember, I started since I was a kid, uh, around mm -hmm. eight years old, nine years old. I still have memories of typhoons which I ch chase outside the house. And uh, mm -hmm. my mom told me when as early as five years old, I already have this passion. When there's a strong wind, I go out and feel the wind. Mm. <laughs> That's how it <laughs> began. But they are amazed that uh, nobody in our family have this kind of uh, passion. So uh, during my elementary years, I collected newspaper clippings on storms. I attended uh, Pag-asa seminars as early as grade mm -hmm. four and grade five. I typed all the bulletins of Pag-asa during yeah. my high school years at my grandfather's school, Naga College Foundation. Mm -hmm. And I have this very big chart with a ladder where, where I plot the storms. And I spent oh. uh, overnight during typhoon passage of uh, strong typhoons over at Kapag-asa Kamaligan with my 
uh, friends at pag-asa yeah. during those times. <laughs> so uh, that passion continued when I entered college. I took a BS geography, although there's no uh-huh. course on meteorology during that time. Right. Uh, I still uh, have this uh, sort of passion on typhoons. I took up BS geography. It's the closest thing. Mm-hmm. It has subjects also on uh, on uh, weather and climate uh, at the UP dormitories where I lived for the past uh, 1990 to 1995, mm-hmm. 94. Uh, I posted tropical cyclone warnings and advisories also on the dormitories at UP. So During it the started, time, and then sir, when I went yeah. back to Naga, when I graduated, yeah, mm-hmm. when I graduated in 1995, I went back at home. I uh, I was uh, hired by NCF to manage the internet center because at the time it's something new, new technology. <laughs> uh, we have only two units before. Alam natin mahal pang internet at the time. Right. Yes, and Tayo, so discover <laughs> nag-unit yung interest ko on typhoons. Oh, super bagal. 13.3, 13.6. Right. The one with that annoying sound when you connect. Yeah. That... <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I then I, yeah, I discovered that there's no website on tropical cyclones. But there's also already in the U.S. about uh, tropical mm. cyclones. So I started researching and learn how to create uh, HTML coding and some graphics designing. So I, I founded Typhoon 97 on November 2, 1997. Oh, wow. It's a free website on hosted by GeoCities at the time. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's a free it website hosting. <laughs> then uh-huh. uh, for the next three years, 97, 98, 99, until the year 2000, mm-hmm. where the name Typhoon 2000, I already decided to buy my own domain name. Domain. So, and yeah, own uh, so, hosting. It's a <laughs> so 23 the, it, year old website. Yeah. <laughs> then there's this typhoon in 2004 which went back to Naga City where mm-hmm. I advised the uh, state secretary, late mayor Jesse Robredo that it will hit Naga. So mm-hmm. I was the one who advised him and then it came through sadly. So marami rin nagulat at that time but the next day, I was talk of the town during that time. And the rest yeah. is history. I became <laughs> the director of yeah, Naga College Foundation Typhoon for the Center. Then in 2012, until June, I was hired by Weather Philippines and met you group to become yeah. part of the organization. Mm-hmm. So, so my question, um, yes. some may wonder uh, if you want to track typhoon, you should be associated or affiliated with um for example, government agency like Pag-asa. First mm-hmm. is, why did you pursue that kind of path? And second, yeah. um, what made you, what motivated you to stay uh, in this free, sort of a freelance career, right? Uh, for yeah. the, for two, more than two and a half, more than two decades. Uh, one of my biggest dilemma, why I didn't, because the one of the rules of Pag-asa, if you want to become a majority, you must have a graduate degree in I mean a course in in uh, physics or engineering and my okay. biggest dilemma at the time I was I was not good in math <laughs> but you're here <laughs> I, it didn't stop me on pursuing my career which I mm-hmm. have for the past few years with private weather organizations so yeah I continued learning especially on typhoons mm-hmm. I, during the internet uh, the start of the internet, I, I became a member of the cyclone group, consists of meteorologists from the National Hurricane Center, from mm-hmm. Europe, from UK, from Madagascar, mm-hmm. Australia, so, so many uh, folks which they embraced my passion. So mm-hmm. I became a member of their group. It, it's interesting uh, that yes. you've mentioned that, <laughs> sir, sir Mike, because I always thought that if you, if you wanted to pursue a career in meteorolo- meteorology, mm-hmm. You always there. There's always that direction that you have to work for Pagasa, and it's actually uh, to be honest with you, it's my first time to hear that there are actually you know private organizations and private meteorologists who are who are also doing the same. So my question is, how is it different, uh, like a private meteorologist from a public meteorologist? Is that it? Is there any difference? Is the language is this, yeah different? <laughs> uh, May rules kasi sila eh. Siyempre kung hindi yeah. ka naman graduate sa ganun. So hindi right. ka. Uh, with this 5-8 weather company which hired me, 
ang hinahanap nila sa isang metrologist is the passion and the knowledge and the experience mm-hmm. na meron ko. Iyon yun hindi nakikita sa iba. Although I respect the forecasters of Pagasa, I, tra- mm-hmm. I also trust them sa mga decision nila. So well, may mga ganyan po na way. Kasi may mga kilala kina kung naging metrologist sila in different yeah. avenues. So, yun po ang... Ayun nga eh, dahil yun ang dilema ko. <laughs> Hindi ko <laughs> Is Although, there a conversation, sir, or like a debate mm. uh, between private, you know, meteorologist and government meteorologist? Or you're just speaking okay. of the same analysis and same forecast and same assessment? Do you talk? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we... Yung mga contact ko... What do you mean with our local with our national yes uh, when, yeah or uh, local uh, yeah in the past when i was in high school college uh, during actually during my up years mm-hmm. ang tambayan ko i don't they, they didn't join any organization na organization or yung mga fraternities Fraternity, uh, yeah. kasi ako sa excitement ko sa mga bagyo ang tambayan <laughs> ko is pag-asa Quezon City <laughs> so the old guys <laughs> at pag-asa Quezon City kilala nila ako doon. I've been there mm-hmm. every... Pag walang pasok na doon ako, nag-observe ko ng typhoon and nag- nagkakon ako ng uh, friend ko, si Nilo Millanes, mm-hmm. sa umagang kay Ganda. Ganda, right. He's mm-hmm. my best friend oh. sa weather since during my college years. Actually, uh-huh. I invited him to be part of Weather Philippines before he became uh, part of ABS-CBN before it closed right. down. So... Mm-hmm. Sir, for, for instance, um, would you happen to know how many typhoons have you recorded ever ever since, you know, as, as far since as... Since you started. Oo, uh, up until now. Ang dami na eh. Hindi ko naman bilang. <laughs> pero Di naman bilang. yung mga naalala kong first na na-record ko using my aneroid barometer was in uh, 19, 1985. Oh, okay. okay may, Papanganak ko pa lang nun. Oh, 1985, yung bagyong saling. Okay. Then we have Typhoon Sisang, right. 1987, 1989. Another saling, same name. Hindi like kasi, ang bagyo kasi sa Pilipinas, papalitan lang ang pangalan kapag destructive. Pag hindi yeah, destructive, yeah. may certain amount of about recycle. a billion pesos. And then, yeah, <laughs> right. recycle yan before use. Kasi, right. A typhoon is a very low pressure area. Pag low mm-hmm. pressure area, low pressure lang talaga. Below, uh, may, may ano yan, may atmospheric pressure reading in hectopascals or millibars. So, ang normal <laughs> atmospheric pressure is 1,013. Uh-huh. Even good weather, pag hapon o ulan, yan ang normal atmospheric pressure. Pag uh-huh. mababa na sa 1,006 hanggang mag 890, 890, yung mga the likes of Yolanda na yun. So, I see. Oh, I see. Kaya may mga tao na bibingi kapag uh, ah, kapag may okay, kumalaan na ay. Kaya I sinasabi see. low pressure. Okay, now that you're talking ab- already about uh, tropical cyclones, I yes. think this is also the perfect time to do the primer, Sir Mike. Um, okay. First is, what is the difference between tropical storm, storm. and tropical cyclone? Okay, oh, um, let's... Uh, first discuss about the generic term. Apo. Kasi ang generic term po nito, globally, it's known as tropical cyclones. Mm-hmm. So ito ang global generic term ng uh, isang weather system situated over the tropics. When we say uh, tropics, it's near the equator. Okay, where in, If we uh, set an example for the Philippines, from the equator up to Taiwan. That's the tropics. Okay. So any mm. low pressure system which be, be, intensifies and reach this certain threshold, it's known as a tropical cyclone. So global po yan, generic term, it's like gamut. Example, yeah. paracetamol, so yan ang global generic term. Alaksan. Right. There are different brands. Right? <laughs> so ang different brands yan, pagdating sa tropical cyclones, yun yung regional classification. It depends uh, on what basin are you located. In the Western okay. Pacific, And South China Sea, ang tawag natin dyan, and in the Philippine Sea, of course, typhoons po. Galing po yan sa Chinese word na uh, typhoon, big wind. Now, from the international dateline, Eastern Pacific po yan, Central Pacific, Hawaii, U.S., hanggang Atlantic Ocean and Gulf of Mexico, up to the west coast of Africa, it's known as hurricane. Hurricane is the word na ginagamit doon sa basin nila. So, galing po yan sa 
uh, Caribbean God of Storm na Huracan. Okay. Ang area naman po ng Arabian Sea, Indian Ocean, Bay of Bengal, sa may Madagascar, South uh, Indian Ocean, South Pacific Ocean, kasama ang Australia, ang tawag nila dyan sa mga tropical cyclones, simply, you drop the word tropical. Cyclones lang po ang tawag. I see. They call cyclones in oh, Australia. This, uh, okay. From the Arabic term na coil to coil. Kasi parang umiikot sila, di ba? Mike, how, how, what's the average number of typhoons? Uh, that visits Philippines annually. On the average kasi, ang, ang tropical cyclone sa atin dito sa Western Pacific is averaging nasa 27. Okay. Every year. Okay. Sa US, sa US, sampo doon sa Atlantic Ocean. Sa Indian Ocean, lima. South Pacific, uh, mga five to six din. So, mas marami talaga sa Western Pacific. Malaki yung Pacific Ocean. So, it's affects the Philippine Islands na sa typhoon so it, belt ang Philippines. So is it safe to say that Philippines uh, is the one who, re- who receives It's like the, the most ty- Yeah, the <laughs> most <laughs> tropical cyclones in the world. Yeah. Sa Philippines kasi, meron tayong pag-designate ang pag-asa. Kasi yung sinasabi kong 27 tropical cyclones annually, this is the Western Pacific Basin. Kasama po dyan ang Guam, ang China, Southern China, and Taiwan, and Japan. Vietnam. Apo. Within the Philippine area of responsibility, we have an annual average of 20. Still, mm-hmm. we are the number one most visited most when it visited, comes to yeah. tropical cyclone right. within that power line. Sa so US, 10 lang eh. But because of La Nina, nade-disrupt po ang formation nila. Actually, this year, ito na ang pinaka-active na hurricane season sa Atlantic Ocean which is on the average ang lang sa kanila na yun umabot sila ng 30 wow. first time oh, first time sa atin that's the regional classification so we have also what we call as the classification within the uh, Western Pacific which include, includes the Philippines and US side uh, mm-hmm. some agencies call it as categories so we are going to divide it based on the wind speeds of tropical cyclones so the weakest of them all from a low pressure area to a tropical cyclone, it will be known as a tropical depression. Mm-hmm. So a tropical depression is a tropical cyclone starting to develop with wind speeds of uh, 45 to 62 kilometers per hour. So the, the wind of this tropical depression is not yet fully distributed around the circulation. It's only uh, on the northeastern or around 1 p.m. from the center of that tropical cyclone near the center. Once the system reaches uh, 64 kph up 80, uh, 89 kilometers per hour, it's called a tropical storm. It's based on the strength of tropical cyclones. Then from, for, for, from 90 from 90 to uh, 117 kph, it's now known as severe tropical storm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is then, this your, your typhoon signal number one? No, right? not yet. Not that's, yet. That's that's the different uh, uh, term when it comes to wind signal of pagasa. Mm, okay, so okay. this is only the category or the classification of tropical cyclones within our country. Okay. And then from 118 up to 219 kph, it's known now as a typhoon. It's becoming stronger, and when the eye pops out, it's already a typhoon. That's our uh, signal. Signal, the eye, uh, yeah. like the center. Yeah, the center with a uh, small eye, mm-hmm. a clear eye. So it's starting to be known as a typhoon. Right. Then mm-hmm. from 220 or more, it's now known as a super typhoon. I see. Okay. And in the U.S., in the U.S., they also have similar uh, classification or categories: tropical mm-hmm. depression, tropical storm, but they don't have severe tropical storm. Only here in our country, from tropical storm, jump to hurricane. And hurricane mm-hmm. are, are classified into five categories. Mm-hmm. One, two, three, four, five. Super typhoon f- for us, for them, it's category four or five in the United States. Okay. So let's remove the, the uh, saying that hurricanes are more powerful than uh, yeah. typhoons. Yeah. <laughs> typhoons. Way back before 2015, 2000, uh, from 2015 since 1979, the strongest in the world was Super Typhoon Tip. It has wind speed recorded using an uh, aircraft reconnaissance 
It entered the eye of this uh, super typhoon and recorded wind speeds of 300 kph. Wow. And then it was broken by Hurricane Patricia. Oh, okay. Hurricane Patricia in 2015 with winds of 345 kph. Oh, yeah, I remember this. Oh, That's, okay. Yeah. It made landfall over uh, western uh, side of Mexico. Okay. Of the United. So Hurricane Patricia now is the world's Strong. longest but it's just a very small uh, tropical cyclone. The largest of them all, when it comes to sizes, it's still super typhoon tip. The former king of wind speeds when a tropical cyclone. So this Sir. is y- Yolanda. Yolanda and uh, Goni. Oh, Yolanda, Hayan, okay, or Rolly. Yolanda and Rolly, the wind speeds of 315 kph are only estimates based on the Russian uh, Devorak satellite analysis which has been okay. used since 1980s so mm-hmm. this ito yung uh, this are measuring tool of wind speeds based on satellite uh, technology okay. so we are okay. using these wind speeds to save money uh, instead of flying to the eye but the US mm-hmm. government is still doing it flying to the eye to get the exact wind speed so oh. until now these are estimates because it's almost the same. I, I just want to know, uh, we can measure the wind speed, but um, how about the amount of rain that this rain typhoon volume. will bring? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Kasi, it, have, uh, yeah. I was about to ask, sir, Mike, because uh, for, hmm. for instance, yeah. um, the mo- I, I think okay. one of the most memorable typhoon for me was Typhoon Ondol. And, okay. and I also think that one of the most disastrous typhoons Uh, that happened in the Philippines are those that weren't expected. My my question is, can can meteorologists uh, predict the volume of of, of rain a typhoon true? cut yeah, can 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 bring in, that. even if it's just it's, it haven't done landfall yet? Undo it was not a typhoon; it's only a tropical storm. Actually, since 2006, we have already this uh, NASA rain estimates where we can see the amount of rainfall if you uh, measure it within the span of 24 hours okay. so usually it's tropical storms tropical cyclones even the uh, weakest of tropical uh, cyclones have rain accumulation for 24 hours so up to 500 millimeters or more that's the maximum okay. it could get But what happened to undo is it's a very slow moving and it's only concentrated in this area of national capital region when it passed over right. central Luzon. it right. was Yeah, uh, it's not a healthy tropical cyclone when it comes to meteorological point of view. It's rather when we tackle Ondoy, it's a shared system. When we say shared system, it's not fully organized. It's not circular. Most of okay. the rain clouds is on the lower side only with no clouds on the northern side. It's only on the southern side. And uh, it's just sad when it passed Metro Mani- uh, uh, Central Luzon, most of that rain clouds with high amount of rain was concentrated over Metro Manila and the storm uh, was moving very slowly. Very slowly. So based on historical data, this kind of system can happen every 50 to 100 years. So it just... So, so this is rare. Yeah, it's really rare, but it can happen again if we have this the same situation where the storm is moving slowly or even mm-hmm. making stationary have this kind of all the rain clouds are concentrated over metal Manila for this uh, span mm-hmm. of six hours so th- it happened actually the estimates of the satellite was around uh, really more than 500 millimeters six hours before it passed over metro manila that's why my website typhoon 2000 already mentioning more than 250 millimeters of rainfall over metro manila yeah. That Sir Mike, um, I remember back then as well, because uh, Typhoon Ondoy actually opened a lot of lessons, uh, especially in 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 the national government. And I remember one of the the, the key project back then was Project Noah. Noah. And mm-hmm. one of the buzzword um, when we talk about Project Noah was the Doppler system or the Doppler yes. radars. Radar. I, I'm just curious what. What's the, the purpose of the Doppler radar? The tool using Doppler radar, the, that's why we have that, is to measure the exact amount of possible rainfall that could fall in an mm-hmm. affected area. 
So you will see there the uh, high amounts of hourly rain within that okay. weather system. Just like this tree, this tree of weather system that passed over Bicol region. Right. Uh, gladly, we have already a mosaic of all the radar system which was Across established by Pagasa. Yeah. yeah. And then we could see the amount of rainfall falling around yeah. Bicol and during like Quinta and Raleigh and Ulysses. That's why yeah. days before Ulysses passed over the zone, I already keeping an uh, advice to the public that it will be a major rain system. But the Doppler so, radar is just, mm-hmm. you know, um, centered on a specific area. Right? There's like a, a uh, certain no, uh, amount of yeah, cover. Rate. Around 250 kilometers max. I see. It's still better to have radar Double because radar. every 10 minutes you can see the amount of rainfall. We will talk more. In our next segment, we will just have a short break. We will be right back after some short reminders. <music> Want to learn about corporate security and risk management from industry experts for free? Check our latest MidDirect Touchpoint to learn more. MidDirect Touchpoint is Black Pearl's online webinar platform where security professionals and enthusiasts discuss relevant security frameworks, strategies, and issues. To register, check our LinkedIn account for the most upcoming topic and schedule. Welcome back to Simply Security. Tonight, we have Typhoon Specialist, Mr. David Michael or Sir Mike Padua, discussing about tropical cyclones in the Philippines. So, Sir Mike, in our discussion last week, one of the issues highlighted in the experience of Cagayan and Isabella during Typhoon Ulysses was despite the typhoon being reported, many did not really understand the possible severity of the typhoon impact. So, looking back, what could we have done better in order to avoid this? What? The most uh, important thing we should do is to have a uh, information updates on upcoming mm. tropical cyclones. Even though it's far from Cagayan, we mm-hmm. have the enhanced northeast monsoon, mm-hmm. which could bring lots of rainfall. Even the storm is way uh, south, and uh, we sh- we n- we knew that this system is a large system, around one thousand kilometers in diameter. The hazards when it comes to tropical cyclones are the flooding, Fly, are, the, are the flooding, okay, landslides. The, uh, landslides. We have mm-hmm. the high winds, the storm surge. There's also this uh, mesoscale vertices. These are small twister within the eye wall of a typhoon. Okay. Which are, which were uh, uh, witnessed during Hurricane Andrew in the United States. That's why. Although we cannot observe it using uh, own eyes because it's zero visibility, but through the use of Doppler radar. Because Doppler radar, the ones we look at it on the web, are mainly based on the rainfall. But Doppler radar also have a mode which you can see the wind speeds. If the wind speeds is moving away from your station and the wind speeds is incoming, come uh, going to your station, with that two wind direction, you can also forecast if, or you can advise if there's a small twister within the eye wall. Mm-hmm. So these are just uh, the hazards involved in tropical cyclones. Uh, in Cagayan was the combined enhancement of the northeast monsoon and the circulation right. of, of the large circulation of Ulysses. So it's a matter of giving uh, the right information to the people in layman's turn. That's mm. true. That's the, for me, for me because that's what I'm doing here since 2004 in yeah. Naga City. Talking about laymanizing, you know, mm. scientific terms, for, for you in your experience for how many decades now, Yeah. what were your best practices or what were your effective strategies in making people understand making and appreciate Making people understand and appreciate, exactly. Because I think that's uh, one, yeah. one thing that is very important. So what I've done in the local uh, setting here in Naga and Kamarili Sur, I usually say what time the, the strong wind will arrive yeah. and what time will it leave. And then the onset of the rain and also the uh, 30 minutes. So every hour I'm on the air on different radio stations here in Naga. Just imagine, okay. <laughs> I'm just the one doing it. <laughs> so it's very tiring, but it's, uh, it's my passion. So I'm, I'm happy to do it. 
just to help the kababayan. So the right. people, their anxiety lessens because they know through my advice if the storm yes. is starting to move. I don't give some tech, more technical inputs, but I used to say the strong the winds is like this and like that. Mm. And uh, you have reference this. points. Yes, you... reference points. Yeah, I do the uh, example in Naga. The wind will shift from this direction, from this. Uh, example from the, if the wind from the church is blowing this way i usually say that so yes. you must have a thorough knowledge of your environment of your location to explain it to the public so that they can understand fully do you localize and that's, it from yeah yeah right. and that's yeah. where geography comes <laughs> yeah geography it's very helpful <laughs> here in naga in kamarili so i'm always saying that there's this trick when it comes to passages of typhoons. For the past uh, 20 years, most of them uh, passes to the south of Naga City. So in a tropical cyclone, the strongest wind is, uh, is always located, if say uh, if this is the eye of the storm, it's mm-hmm. always located at one o'clock, okay? Uh-huh. Along the eye wall. Because the eye wall okay. is the strongest part of the storm. That's where the maximum sustained winds and the gustiness is uh, located. From. When I say oh, sustained yeah. winds, that's the sustained within one minute or 10 minutes. And the gustiness is the three-second wind, the blast of three-second wind that could damage the structures and the trees and the plants. Oh, makes sense. So that's the gustiness. So it's always between 12 to 1 p.m. When you mm-hmm. look at, just imagine the eye is the center of the wall clock, okay? Right. Yeah. And the eye wall is between 12, It's on the on, uh, the printed uh, number of hours, right? And then mm-hmm. the 12 noon and the 12 p.m., that's where the strongest wind will be mm-hmm. situated. That's why when the storm passes south of Naga, we will always be expecting strong winds instead of the rainfall. The rainfall is more located on the southern eye wall oh, between eight, mm-hmm. 5 to 8 p.m. of the wall clock. Okay. So mm-hmm. that's why the gaspy during... Uh, Kinta and Rolly experience flooding more, along the more, slopes of Mayan. Yeah. Okay, I that's see. also goes with the the, the case of Reming. It's right. killed 1,000 people during those times in 2006. And then when a typhoon passes north of Naga, just like Ulysses did, you see the results: more rainfall over yeah. Kamarili Sur, overflowing of Bicol River, Naga River. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. This Sir Mike, the is, is that cancer. the general? Is that the general? Your uh, general observation for us, um, Bicol or Philippines is concerned. Yes, here in the country, that's okay. usually Philippines. Yes. Typhoon yes. Funk in 99 in 2008 that passed very close to uh, Boracay. Right. It flooded mm-hmm. the whole of Negros and yes, uh, Panay because yeah, yeah. they are on the southern eye wall. Yeah. So that is very interesting. Yeah. Because if you if you're gonna going to uh, monitor typhoon tracking because we have mm-hmm. applications right now. Um if you see the wind, uh, I mean the eye of the typhoon, you can exp- I, we can use the information the that you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no, that actually made a lot of very sense. Helpful. Every time there's a typhoon, they have this saying Calmness before the storm. Whenever a super typhoon approaches a location, you expect it. All of the clouds is going into that system, it's and like then growing the clouds. That's, it's like sucking it in. Yeah, that's the lower level clouds. Take note that we have a three dimensional uh, uh, form of a typhoon. Right Because up around the flight levels of airplanes and uh, mm-hmm. at the edge of the troposphere, around fifty thousand feet. Mm-hmm. The winds there are going outside from the near the eye outside, so okay. it creates a dry air. So mm-hmm. once it reaches the edge of tropical cyclones, it generates good weather. I see. That's why. Okay. So Makes that's sense. why there's a, and calm within the, the storm. That's the eye. Within the within the yeah. Eye. <laughs> yeah. During the storm, it's a sudden sudden. Uh, calmness sometimes it depends on the speed of the storm okay mm-hmm. Yolanda is moving at 45 kph the uh, the lull lasted only for 5 minutes okay mm-hmm. Rolly was moving at 28 kph when it's it, lower yeah actually it's still fast but the average speed of a typhoon is uh, 19 to 20 kph 
So it's 28, it's already faster a little bit, but since the eye is has started deteriorating, the, the calm, the lull is only around 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Super Typhoon Loleng of 1998, which passed over Catanduanes, and it was moving at 7 kph. The whole <laughs> eye is over Catanduanes, so the lull lasted for six hours from 8 p.m. to 2, 2 a.m. I see. And just I imagine, <laughs> there are yeah. typhoons like that. I see. There's also one case, a typhoon in near Okoneawa. It remains quasi stationary there. It lasted for 12 hours within the eye. Is it possible for uh, a, a, an event to have two typhoons at the same time? Yes, within the Philippine area responsibility, yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> it, it happened already. It, yeah, it happened already. The, the one is like, like, like Rolly and, and yeah, Shoni. Shawnee. Uh, Shawnee. Yeah, yeah but they merged. The circulation, the circulation of, of uh, Raleigh, the outflow, is disrupting the formation of Shawnee. That's why Shawnee didn't develop until yeah. Raleigh accelerated and made landfall over Vietnam. And then when the typhoon is very close to each other, there's this term, Fujiwara effect. Yes. It's the uh, pull and push of two tropical cyclones within 1,000 kilometers of each other. Uh, sometimes if they the uh, nearby storm is lots, uh, lots weaker, okay? Much weaker, I mean. Strong typhoon will eat some of its Hello. circulation until, yeah, <laughs> until it uh, dissipates. Yeah. But the I wind see. speed will not add up. It will just okay. be a part of the circulation. When it comes to uh, public warning um, of tropical cyclones, it is easily understood that if it's typhoon mm. number two or three, government okay. uh, employees will no longer uh, suspend work. Or, yeah, or they're no longer expected to go to okay. work. But it's different from the private sector. Now, mm -hmm. how can we effectively report the possible impact of a typhoon against the welfare of our employees and assets? And to make companies come up with a decision about their employees' welfare? Well, when it comes to storm signals, actually, Pag-asa are using this to alert us. So we have, uh, actually, the history began way back in 1963 when Pag-asa introduced these warning signals to three. There were three signals at the time. Yeah. Okay, signal number one, signal number two, signal number three. Mm -hmm. So we start with uh, signal number one. Signal number one, means a tropical cyclone could affect a locality within the next 36 hours with uh, winds of 30 to 60 kph. So okay. this 30 to 60 kph is manageable. It's not yet destructive, but within 36 hours. So it doesn't say, if you say uh, there's a typhoon approaching and your place is placed under signal number one, the effects will come within 36 hours. Mm -hmm. Now, it depends if the typhoon is close to your land or a tropical depression is over your area and it it intensified into a tropical depression from a low pressure area, the effects of signal number one will be right away. All right. Okay. So uh, during the course of history, it, it changed. It changes these storm signals from signal number one, two, three to signal number, they added another one, signal number four, after mm -hmm. Super Typhoon Ruping last, uh, last uh, Cebu in 1990, they added in 1991 signal number four. Yeah. So signal okay. number four, then after Yolanda, they added signal, signal number, number five. five. Right. So it's not the storm getting stronger. It's just an added uh, yeah. warning Category. to us to be fully Preferred. And I, I remember so for the, Typhoon yeah. Ondoy, after Typhoon Ondoy, that's the, also the same, uh, after that, that's also the same time wherein Pagasa started giving out uh, rain, uh, rainfall warnings or advisories yeah, or alerts. Yeah. And then right now, the, the signals is no longer including, including the rainfall. It's only the wind. That's why yeah. public storm wind signal. Mm -mm. Okay, so, so how the, can we... If that's if that's the case, uh, Sir Mike, how can we get information as to the amount or volume of rain? Well, uh, when you look at the Pagasa bulletins, you can see the hazards yeah. there. The amount right. of rainfall is there. Uh, it's it's too wordy. You have to read further. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. But, but it's yeah. too wordy. Yeah. That, that's the, the <laughs> you know the best thing really to hear is to train train uh, uh, enthusiasts and also forecasters. To, 
on a specific location where they live. So exactly. that they are the localized one that will, forecasting. Yeah, just like a cloning of me. I don't like that. Yeah, that's <laughs> so that, true. <laughs> because it's the, that's the uh, biggest uh, buck. I call this the biggest uh, uh, hindrance as of now mm-hmm. with our weather view. Yeah. Uh, actually, pag ASA is doing uh, nowadays. Ah, uh, pag ASA is doing well. The equipments are good. The forecast is mm-hmm. similar to my tracks Precise. and, and yeah. other weather agencies. But the problem now is it goes down to the uh, municipalities, the, the communities. Yeah, yeah, the language, the how to explain to the public. Yeah. And yes. Mostly is the knowledge on how to uh, interpret it to the public. I think it, it's very on, important. Yeah. Eh? Like uh, when you when you talk about weather reporting, I mm. mean having a localized authority or like a, a, a point person to, to, to report um, to report weather, it, it, it's more convincing for people. That that's just my observation. Like for for instance, in, in the case of Sir Mike, uh, because of his uh, you know his expertise and his mm-hmm. type of reporting, it's more localized. So if it's more mm-hmm. localized, it's easier for people to, you know, um, to, to understand it. And then yes. it gives yes. that authority. Now, if, mm. if let's say the, the LGU says now we have to evacuate based because based from the localized weather report of Sermite, yes. you know, this could happen. It has more weight. It mm-hmm. has more weight. Because sometimes, uh, even Mahar Lagmai have mentioned this in, in, in some of his conferences. Uh, sometimes people happen um, when it when it comes to pagasa. We're not criticizing pagasa, naman, but yes. it, it, it's sometimes it's some locals cannot relate because the the weather advisory that they put in are very too, gen- uh, national. too general. National, mm, it's too yeah. general. So and then it, it it also makes me think. Na let's say for for companies to. You know, I know for one one particular multinational company, it's an Australian-based uh, construction firm. I'm not I'm not going to name them, na lang. But <laughs> mm-hmm. let's say one of their HSE, uh, HSSE, which is Health, Safety, Security, and Environment head, is a, actually a meteorologist. So okay. when when that person says, na uh, even if let's say you know the government would say that it's just typhoon signal number three, but for him since he happens to have you know understanding of mm-hmm. their their company dynamics blah 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 or where their employees live, it, it gives him like an authority to to you know to to say or to advise to upper management that we should suspend work as of the moment because these are my possible. You know, uh, it's to customize analysis. the information. Exactly. Yeah. Yun Actually, yeah. that's what we do during the times of weather Philippines. Right. Uh, we are talking to the management. They suspend this one, and it mm. uh, turned out well. Because yeah. mm-hmm. very important, yun, and may kung talaga point person right. when it comes to this uh, uh, hazards, especially to mga typhoons. Na kasi kung rely, you rely only on the national thing it's very hard to uh, really locally yeah to put it yeah. unless so what, uh, you're the first yeah. so what would you advise to companies uh for example uh, just basic um tip on uh possible qualifiers or red flags or um the basis gauge where they should suspend or not yeah. What's your advice? Because most yeah. of the time, sir, Mike, uh, the demand to go to work is really yeah. high, especially if you're a production-driven uh, company. Na mm-hmm. parang, you know, at the end of the day, you're immortal. Uh, <laughs> you and they can, don't understand what typhoon you're, you're means. You're disaster-proof, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> especially so, if it's like the U.S. demanding. Because, for instance, for the U.S., since they just know that this is a typhoon, and for them, it's a normal thing that the, there's a typhoon yeah. passing through the Philippines. But... Us in the ground, you know, we're 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 experiencing a lot. That's why I I think companies they have these disaster managers that mm. should be trained when it comes right. to this kind of hazards. Not only typhoons, but earthquakes, fire, and mm. uh, if they can afford the meteorologists, because there are companies also that can, like Semex. Uh, Semex is a <laughs> you know Semex, uh, just yeah, an yeah. example. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have the their own meteorologist 
Kasi very important this cement everything. Yeah. So, ah. major, maybe like that. And of course, some of the most unexpected typhoons in the country are heavy typhoons such as Ondoy, Habagat, and now Ulysses. Though most of the time, weather reports only talks about how strong they are, but not how mm. heavy. Is there a way for us to know if an upcoming typhoon will be heavy in order for us to better prepare against flooding? Yes. In the case of Ulysses, you can see it in advance that the system is a rain-bearing mm. weather system because you can already measure the amount of rainfall. Like before, it made landfall close to... Uh, I mean, it made landfall over Luzon. When it passed close to Bicol, the rainfall already around 500 millimeters. Mm. Uh, so there should be a clear explanation that this system is really a rain event yeah. not only the wind wind because like the, in the case of Raleigh Raleigh is a small system right. and it didn't affect because it has a, a boomerang effect look they're forecasting it will pass over Metro Manila but what happened to Raleigh was the upper level winds the winds around 25 to 50,000 winds uh, 25 to 50,000 feet was yeah. so strong during the passage of, of Raleigh and since it's a 600 kilometer diameter typhoon, when it made landfall to uh, Cranduanes, it quickly, the eye quickly disappeared, which is not common on typhoons because when a typhoon hits Bicol, it yeah. takes time before the eye will disappear when it will pass very close to Metro Manila. Well, for me, Sir Mike, um, when, for example, I hear that there is a typhoon, gone, I think it will be helpful to have those questions, you know, list of questions mm. or like a checklist type. First is the track, right? Second yeah, is yeah. the typhoon signal. Maybe you can add as well. Third is um, the, the gustiness, mm, right? Okay. The wind speed, the amount of rainfall. What else should we... Uh, no, uh, to to come up with good decisions whether yeah. to evacuate or not and um, evaluate our situation. Yes, example for my advisory. It's actually it's only my own advisory. Mm-hmm. Uh, consider the amount of uh, the rainfall at the bottom section, the diameter of the wind, diameter of the rain, and the amount of rainfall that could be present within the system and the, yeah. uh, the wind speed. It's more on a question and answer my advisory. If you look yeah. at my advisory, what, where is the storm? Uh, what areas will be affected? And there are areas like that. Uh, but in case of uh, Pag-asa, they must, be, uh, they must improve also on the... Uh, they must release this some kind of a very short synopsis yeah. on these uh, uh, elements of the amount of rainfall and the wind. Yeah. It's too text heavy right now. How about Sir Mike a possible impact? Because you know, typhoon is a typhoon. However, yeah. sometimes typhoon happens to have that um impact when it comes to flooding, flush flood. Mm-hmm. Of yeah. course there's also a difference there. Landslide, yes. mudslide. When it comes to impact, uh, Eric, it's the decision now of the of the local forecaster to explain to the public right. because mm. there are storms that are slow moving but mm-hmm. it's only a tropical depression because people will say ulan lang yan, no? but like Usman. take note there are yeah Usman it remained quasi stationary and right. most of the rain bands over Samar and Bicol so mm-hmm. what will you expect so these are important the, the movement how fast how slow how mm-hmm. strong oh. how heavy or lighter is the rain and where what part of the circulation is this the strongest that's what i said here in naga in this case but yeah be take into account that typhoons passing north of your location would have more rainfall on your location because it's passing yeah. north of your location but if you're passing south of your location the the more uh, hazard will be the wind in this instead of the rain. Like, just like, example, Reming. It's interesting, sir, Mike. It's a, the, the direction that we were thinking uh, with regard to this top, really how to laymanize mm. uh, the, the, the technical jargons when it comes to weather reporting. Mm. And it's interesting. It's really not the communication that is uh, that we're, we're having problems. At least this is my takeaway. Okay. It, it's more on finding that person who would localize the weather <laughs> advisor and because make it more right. everyone can do it. One of the best tools also in mm-hmm. for the people to understand it 
you back track with historical typhoons. Right. Tell the story. Just yeah. like when I mentioned yeah. Rolly, it's similar to yeah. Rosing. I like yeah. that because yeah. we we know that typhoon in the past. So that's something like that. the, the experiences yeah. are you know materializing for any upcoming typhoon. You can wait. <laughs> this is yeah. This is very interesting. And uh, when we come back, we will have uh, some questions from mm-hmm. our listeners. So we're being tuned. thrown a, a lot of questions and comments. So, so <laughs> we'll be right back here in Simply Security, helping you streamline security easily. Tonight's episode is brought to you by Business Profiles Incorporated leading the way to strategic corporate risk and security management solutions. Business Profiles Incorporated, our business is to keep you in business. Black Pearl Consultancy, bringing intelligence analysis, travel security, and business continuity support to new heights. Black Pearl Consultancy, intelligence for smarter decisions. BP Argus Security Services Incorporated. For holistic industrial protection, BP Argus Security Services is committed to the highest standards of providing effective security manpower services. Blue Four Security Services, the security manpower of choice by many companies and organizations in the Philippines. Blue Four Security Services, delivering quality protection and service integrity to your corporate needs. Chronicle Data and Research Solutions. Chronicle Data and Research Solutions provides comprehensive corporate inquiries and background checks for businesses and organizations. Chronicle Data and Research Solutions, delivering concise, factual, and relevant service through expertise and trust. Silver Point Training and Development, the knowledge and skill building arm of Business Profiles Inc offering the latest, most practical and strategic briefings and corporate trainings in the field of business security. And we're back. So here are our questions first from Thomas. Timing appears to be a huge issue. How much warning time can people in the Philippines count on for a warning about a typhoon? Actually, we, we must do this now casting when it comes to the tropical cyclones, because during landfall, any development can happen. Mm-hmm. Just in the case of Ulysses, when the truck is moving west-northwest, it made a southwest uh, jug mm-hmm. or wobble towards the south. That's why during that time, between uh, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., there's some major changes in the weather conditions here in Camarillo Sur. Luckily for one radio station near the eye called me up and I mentioned the uh, possible effects. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's very important to have this now casting when a typhoon mm-hmm. moves closer right. so that you'll see the hourly position of the storm. And we That's have the tools. We have, yeah, we have the <laughs> radar uh, all the radar, uh, we can see where the storm is and when the, where the eye wall is passing. Yeah, I think I hope the government can pursue this this hourly updates, especially. And very important is the radio station. Yeah, you last because it's the tower cheapest. standing. Yeah, yeah. And you can just <laughs> buy a small transistor with right. radio and you can now monitor with the blow by blow account of just the with the battery and it's already a culture <laughs> here in Naga since I started I in 2004 sir sir Mike you have a follower from our, one of our avid uh, audience Mr. Hermi yes, uh, Hermi Colina he, he mentioned personally I only rely on JTWC and Typhoon2000.com so <laughs> He, he yeah. mentioned one of his comments, Pagasa should develop a dashboard type advisor containing critical information um, such as TCWS, amount of rainfall, That's, diameter, yeah. typhoon surge, etc. Yeah. Um, he, also men- he, he also mentioned that before it's calm before, before the storm, but now it's calamity before the storm because just uh, like what happened in Typhoon Raleigh and Typhoon Ulysses amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. That's why that what happened during Uli- Yeah, to add you more on Raleigh, 
what happened to Raleigh when it weakened right away. People are saying, signal number four, where's the wind? Right. Remember? And it's only just a tropical storm and no wind, just the rain. Maybe people One became or complacent. Two. Yeah. Uh-oh. They're saying, hey, it could be the same scenario, but yeah. look, it surprised it's completely the people different. of Luzon. Yeah, it's yeah. really a totally different beast. So, And I think that's also the, the, the tricky part about it you know weather it's very unpredictable yes <laughs> that's why you need to focus yeah, when you, the storm have, you is really have to monitor, you do, yeah, monitor yeah. it because there's uh, this wobble thing storms usually move uh like this uh west northwest but it's not on a straight line sometimes it moved down and up like that wobble right. effect uh-huh. and at that time ulysses is becoming a typhoon it's starting to form an eye where we still don't know how large is the eye. Once the eye appeared, it's around 80 kilometers in diameter. So it mm-hmm. reached the northern coastal areas of Camarines Norte and Camarines Sur. Sir, Mike, I, I saw one um, particular report um, tracing back you know, typhoon tracks. Uh, mm. I think dated back 60s. And one thing okay. that I've noticed is that... Um, most of the uh, typhoon paths are concentrated in Luzon and Visayas. And I, I'm not sure whether or not it's, <laughs> it's still applicable now. But when you look at Mindanao, it, it, it's not relatively yeah. like a, a popular Somehow they're spared. Yeah. yeah, actually, here in our basin, we have these multi-decadal cycles. Okay. So I've learned that during the conferences, past conferences in the U.S., I attended yeah, hurricane conference in Orlando and Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. And through my studies, we, they have these multi-decadal cycles. Now, every 30 years, there's this one or two or three seasons that Mindanao will be affected by these typhoons. And then right. at this time, but it's... Pablo. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, Pablo. And also during 1970, Titang. Titang so it's yeah. just uh, uh, a, called, a blip in in the location of the high pressure areas you know the the movement of tropical cycle depends on the location of the high pressure is steering ah uh, so there's really a scientific because, yeah. basis why yeah. you know. high pressures are the one that drives high pressure steering layer are the one that drives on where the typhoon will go and during those night 2012 when the typhoon pablo hit davao there's mm-hmm. this unusual high pressure that formed over cagayan and Bicol region extending, so the path is very much lower. lower but that is every region. 30 years. Yeah, every 30 or 20. It depends. It's not really fixed at 30 Precise. years. That, yes. Uh, Sir Mike, you mentioned a while ago that um, these three typhoons that passed, this is the first time yes. since 1948 that it happened. In a span of I mean, only two yeah. uh, times, like example, 1981. Yeyeng and Anding <laughs> is similar like Kinta and Roli. Okay, mm. November yun, November 1981. And the next one after ending was Dinang, which happened on December 26, a day after Christmas, and mm-hmm. made landfall over your province or so ago, Dinang, mm-hmm. 1981. So this year, this is the first time in just within two weeks, yeah. three typhoons. And also in 2000, only two. So on the average, there is our every 10 or 20 years, recurring of in one or two weeks back-to-back storms but not three of storms in the same place very close within 50 or 100 kilometers sir mike is it normal uh, because at least basing from my observation over the past 10 years is it usual for the philippines to have most of its uh, strongest typhoons on the latter part of the year up to the the, the first part of the year because what is going, the explanation for Yeah, but for instance, uh, Ondoy, Pablo, you know, mm-hmm. uh, most mm-hmm. of them are Always in the last around quarter. November yes. or to, to the ground. October. Actually, it, it starts uh, after on the bare months. It's really mm-hmm. last week of September, October, and uh, for the past, uh, since 2000, after Yolanda, most of the typhoons, most of them, strong ones, are December. Right. Actually, right. this year is the, worst, oh, is the first time that in so many years that we are going back to the usual October, November of passage mm. of tropical cycles. 
So uh, this uh, tracking of why they are hitting the Philippines and why they are getting stronger during October, November, December comes to the role of the uh, climate of the tropics. Okay, during uh, June to September we have the uh, called the habagat season or the southwest right. monsoon. So there's this high pressure area which produces these winds to curve along the equator. This high pressure area is located over Australia since it's it's a winter over them. Then it generates the southwest monsoon over India and the uh, uh, secondary flow will be the Philippines. So that's why when there's a typhoon, it moves up and struck, uh, I mean, strike uh, Batanes or Northern Luzon, yeah. Yeah. not over Manila or Bicol or besides Mindanao. Now, during Burmans, beginning September, October, November, December, the Southwest Monsoon weekends, and it will be replaced by the Northeast Monsoon, which is the Amihan, mm-hmm. Amihan. where the high pressure will release some cold winds or strong winds towards the Philippines, mm-hmm. there, therefore uh, lessening the chances of tropical cyclones to go up. So it's mm-hmm. more of a Philippine landfall. But there are times when we have a strong cold front because the tail end of a cold front or the shear line in the technical term digs down the high pressure. It breaks temporarily the high pressure. And when there's a typhoon, uh, if, if this is the, the typhoon, this is the cold front, it will put the typhoon up. Uh, okay. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah, that's why sometimes there's a recovery to typhoon. Yeah. Uh, Another question, sir, Mike. Why, why is Pagasa using a different measurement protocol than the JTWC? Example, 10 minutes for Pagasa and 1 minute for JTWC. By the way, yeah, actually, what, what's JTWC? <laughs> uh, JTWC is the uh, weather agency of the U.S. Navy and U.S. Air Force. It's oh, known okay. as the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. They started it in the 1940s and they now cater all the uh, U.S. embassies uh, globally when it comes to mm-hmm. tropical cyclones aside from the National Hurricane Center so they issue warnings and the US and uh, yeah US and Australia they're using one minute average in measuring the wind speed of the uh, tropical cyclone while uh, Pagasa, Japan and other meteorological centers we are since we are a member of the World Meteorological Organization of United Nations they are Sticking on the ten-minute wind average. I see. Okay. But w- w- what is the rationale there behind that ten-minute? Uh, it's more on a scientific basis. The ten-minute average. That's the norm nowadays when you are a member of uh, the World Meteorological Organization, and also by getting the wind speeds of different weather stations, they are sticking with ten-minute average winds every ten minutes. The data. So that's the average wind speeds. So okay, Pagas is okay. just complying with the World Meteorological Organization while only National Hurricane Center and uh, JDWC are using the one minute average because, because using one minute average will impact saving lives. Well, so what are you using, sir? Me, I use the one minute average. One minute, as yeah. I hope, yeah, as I am expecting it. All right, now we have a comment. How I wish every locality can replicate same where there is a local capable weatherman giving every 15 or 30 minute update who is very reliable and whom people believe and look up to, hoping that the government can work up on that from Genghis Valdez. Thank you so much. Um, Anonymous, it is very rare that your childhood passions end up being the thing that you do for all your life. Kudos (laughs) to the work you do, Mr. Mike. All right. (laughs) <laughs> we would like to thank you, Sir Mike. Uh, before we go to our next segment, we would like to invite you to follow and subscribe uh, Sir Mike Padua's uh, YouTube channel, Mr. Typhoon, so that you mm. will be, a- and of course, the typhoon2000.com, so that you will be able to yes. uh, know more and understand better, uh, especially when there's a tropical cyclone. But even uh, without the tropical cyclone, he gives um weather updates and yeah. he has the tagalog and the english version so right, right now. and this and it, uh off season beginning maybe january onwards 
I'm planning also to put some segments of my Typhoon 101. Right. You should YouTube do that, so Mike. that people yeah. will understand. And congratulations <laughs> for your 15,000 followers in YouTube. <laughs> it's, it's, You're it's now an influencer. Small. <laughs> still small. Thank you. Thank you so much. You, you know, right. during the Typhoon Rally, during the Typhoon <laughs> Rally, um, people here in my area, uh, in the Vico region, they, this is the question that they often ask. What what does Mr. Mike Padua say about the typhoon? So he's a household mm. name. And right. uh, we thank you for your work, Sir Mike. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate <laughs> it. I, I'm happy and, to see lives. Yeah. Uh, now we go to our next segment. Our, ne- our last segment, Sir Mike, before we you know release you, uh, we have what <laughs> we call Quick Talk. Uh, basically, quick talk. This is uh, just a, like a fast talk, so it's very simple. It's like boy abunda. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> boy so we will we will basically right. give you uh, ask you questions or two options. You just have to choose one. You cannot say it depends or you cannot refuse to answer the question. Uh, but don't worry, no explanation needed. You just have to okay. give us an answer. All right. Are you yes. ready? Okay. All right. City life or provincial life? Provincial life. <laughs> Strong typhoon or heavy typhoon? What do you mean by heavy? <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. Okay, let's yeah, just say will be the typhoon rain. with strong winds and typhoon with heavy amount of rainfall. Rainfall. I don't like both. Both? <laughs> but I, when I was a kid, I used to enjoy it. But now I think of my family and the people of course. in the, the community, community and the whole the Philippines. Yeah. It's really hard. How about this, Sir yeah. Mike? Good coffee or good pastry? Good pastry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm now. A coffee drinker, yeah. <laughs> okay. Japan Meteorological Agency or Korean Meteorological Administration? Hmm. None? <laughs> I'll, I'll go to JMA because Korea yeah. is not uh, issuing, uh, although they have updates. <laughs> JMA is. <laughs> yeah. More right. reliable. Okay. Laing or kinunot? Mm. Laing. <laughs> Laing. Right. Okay, now we have uh, just two questions. Um, uh, cite th- three things you want Pag-asa to have to further improve their service to the public. Lemonized. Mm-hmm. Localized. Mm-hmm. And... Make it an L. <laughs> so it will be three L's. <laughs> <laughs> and... It's hard. <laughs> but still, it's hard. But maybe it can help open. Mm. Okay. Because you've noticed mm. it. Nobody is answering on there sometimes. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just a no. <laughs> yeah. All right. Last question, Sir Mike. What can you advise to individuals who plan to pursue, uh, to, uh, who plans to pursue a career in weather weather forecast or weather reporting? Uh, before you plan it, just think of what your passion is, mm. because it's hard sometimes. I've known meteorologists that it's not their passion; and they shift to something different. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, you must have th- that passion to serve mm-hmm. the people, not just by learning the uh, concepts of weather and tropical cyclones. And uh, the most important thing is the way you deliver it to the public. Yeah. That's the biggest uh, uh, advantage on your part. And just pursue your dreams. If you have this bakla, just like me, uh, they call me as a maverick meteorologist, but uh, <laughs> a I'm, maverick. I'm at peace actually with Pagasa. I, uh, with, without Pagasa, uh, I might not be here because right. they gave me inspiration during my past years, especially my friends here at Local Pagasa and at Pagasa Manila during mm. the 90s. I have so many friends there at the view, but now they are retired. Uh, <laughs> I'm happy to be. A, tamba- a part of the Tambayan of Bagasa. It's really, yeah. It really helped, but I'm, I'm hoping that uh, pag- actually Pagasa is now uh, a good agency. Yeah. Uh, yes. They just need to uh, explore. I think they must also explore enthusiasts like me. That have, um, there's so many enthusiasts right now at Facebook. Yeah. yeah. Giving out updates yeah. also, not just like me. So there's so Pagasa scholarship, mm. please. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, because in the US, uh, that's that's what they are doing. Eh? The National right. Hurricane Center, they are open with 
enthusiast. Uh, yes. Especially the uh, storm chasers that went here. Some of them yeah. are my friends. Yeah. <laughs> they I signed chase up to storm. that. Their website. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you very, very much, Sir Mike. Uh, Thank you so this much. This is indeed a yeah, very, you know, informative nice. conversation. Yeah. Uh, we it's have. Uh, we hope you had fun as much as yeah. we had. Um, so, of sure. course, thank you for to everyone who tuned in and participated in Business Profiles and Black Pearls Security Podcast, Simply Security. So, we hope that you enjoyed and learned something new tonight through this episode. Um, we also wish to have you again next time. We are casting live every Wednesday, 6.30 in the evening. You can also catch the recordings of tonight's episode starting tomorrow on Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. Just type in Simply Security. And to get the latest security information in the Philippines and for our any upcoming events, do not forget to follow us um, on LinkedIn at Black Pearl Consultancy under Information Services and through our Twitter account via Black Pearl underscore INC. We'd also like to give special thanks to our production team, Gaya, um, Gaya Nina, and Alan. And of course, our managing director, Mr. Joseph yes. Guetta, for making this program possible. Again, this is Miles. And this is Eric. This has been Simply Security. Helping you streamline security easily. See you next Bye. week, guys. Bye-bye. Salamat, Sir Mike. Thank you, Sir Mike. Thank you. Just, Just mabalos. Mabalos. Bye-bye. Just mabalos. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.